Okay, I think I'm on air right now. <laughs> Sorry for, for this little misunderstanding. So I should start over, I think. Um, hi, everyone. Thank you very much for joining us tonight. Uh, my name is Vladimir Rayevsky. I'm a Russian journalist and television presenter. I'm usually making television shows on history and culture on Russian television and Russian radio. But also I'm a little bit involved into cultural institutions, life, like making audio guides in, in, for museums in Russian or making little private tours around museums. So I'm, and I'm a keen, keen fan of visiting museums and visiting, um, visiting exhibitions and collections. So I was kindly invited by organizers to conduct this meeting, to moderate this meeting. And I would be glad very much to introduce my company tonight, um, whom I'm uh, very glad to see here. So it's uh, Mercedes Balso, and director of philanthropy for uh, private banking Cash Bank from Spain. Um, yeah. Also, it's Boris Friedman, um, a Russian-American collectioneer, uh, whose uh, uh, major interest is um, livre d'artiste, um, also also known in in Western world as artist books, but it's a little different, which will be stressed by uh, by Boris. Also, he's broadcasting from Boston, in the United States, and um, I'm also very glad to see. Uh, Juan, Juan Manuel Sevillano Campalans here, Managing Director for Foundation Gala Salvador Dali from Spain as well. And I'm very sorry for this interruption. It happens sometimes when my cat is hungry, <laughs> and he is now. So we'll be very happy to discuss. Um, the following hour will be dedicated for uh, our discussion about relations between a collectioneer, his or her collection, and the museum as an institution which is interested or not interested in the collection. So this is what we're going to, to discuss here. I think um, that Keisha Bank and its, its branches are the, most, the, 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 the largest institutions here in this company tonight. Uh, so I would like to address my first question to Mercedes. Is there any rules and principles upon which Keha, Keisha and you, your um, private banking work with collectioneers and collections. Well, um, it has the we. I have two answers, different ones. Uh, if I answer uh, regarding Keisha Foundation, it has uh, uh, a very special perspective because um, the Keisha Foundation has been uh, collecting. It's in fact has been the first contemporary art collection, private art collection in Spain. It dates from the beginning of the 80s. And since the very first work of art, who was a just boys installation, the, the collection has continued to grow and to work uh, in a international and, and national artist and uh, to work very uh, uh, straight with uh, not only artists, but creators and other uh, uh, players at the ecos art ecosystem. So it has been, um, I, I like to, to stress that the importance of the, of, the, of the patronage, not only by buying work of arts, but by acting and making uh, the art system possible. So, this is a very important role that the contemporary art collection uh, has played or plays in, in Spain. And you, a few minutes ago, mentioned one exhibition about opera that you had the chance to see in, in Barcelona in our facilities. Because besides the, the, the art collect, the contemporary art collection, we have a very, very uh, wide program on uh, uh, cultural dissemination, exhibitions, music. And, and other cultural ways. And if we go, we move to, uh, to the Casha Bank side at the philanthropy uh, service that I am uh, managing now, we try to help our clients, our clients to develop if their 
interest is in art is to develop a way of being or uh, art collectors or buying art concerned about artists and about galleries and about museums. So this is the way we focus, not, not in a way of uh, say uh, what to buy, what is the market value, but what is the, the, the patronage value. So you I'm sorry, can you set an example without giving out names, of course? <laughs> yeah, for instance, a, a client that um, um, uh, expressed her, her or his uh, interest in um, adding value, or let's forget about the, the word value because if we are in private banking, it can be confusing. Uh, someone who wants to be, to help, to be part of the art system. And um, we recommend and we, we listen to if, if they are from Madrid, Barcelona, if they like contemporary, if they like antique, if they want to buy or just be patrons uh, in, in culture, you know. So we first listen what are their interests and then we accompany them to, to develop a project in, um, in the art system. But uh, what, what we want is that they buy, for, I'm going to explain you uh, an example we, we've done a few months ago. We want mm, to, to create uh, new audiences for the arts, okay, in Barcelona. So we organize a program with galleries in Barcelona and uh, our clients. So they meet and they, they get closer to the galleries and get closer to the artist's studio, you know, and it's a way of building new audiences. Is that going to be uh, art collectors? Maybe yes, maybe not. In the in the meantime, they are. We try to engage both sides. You know. So, so it's like I'm coming to you and saying, uh, okay, I have some money that I would like to spend for buying, I don't know, like Russian icons, for instance. Okay. Yeah. And you're helping me in getting acquainted with other collectioneers, with museums, galleries, and so on. And maybe you would advise me to. To buy this or that, right? Uh, we don't advise on, on buying. We advise on how to choose the right uh, place to buy and the right way to buy. Uh -huh. You understand? So we don't have a structure to say like uh, other private other private bankings uh, in, in, in the national uh, side, size. We, we help them. You know, in Spain, art collecting is not that uh, developed. Okay? And if it happens that someone wants to start buying or to, to kind of be a patron or help in, in a way, there are no such a reference, not so many references to do so, you know? So we help and we, we give advice on the process of being and where to go and how to do it. Uh -huh. Is that clear? Yeah. Yeah, more or less. Now we, we know a little more about your job. So let's, let's ask the others. Uh, Mr. Friedman is, as I've said, fond of um, collecting livre d'artiste, which is um, not very common genre of art, but uh, Boris is quite successful in collecting livre d'artiste and he's maybe one of the biggest um, collectioners in Russia for, for this um, graphics genre. Did you ever, um, Boris, I'm addressing this question to you. Yeah. Did you ever have any um, so-called helpers or assistance in making up your collection? Uh, if you mean from what side? If you mean from side of museums or... From uh, any, like Mercedes told, you know, like... Um, no, this, <laughs> their, advice their service the, is... The, the from, biggest, professional the, advice. The biggest advice and the biggest uh, helper, it's market. It dealers, auctions, and so on. Mm. Uh, that's, that's the main... But, but I would like, I don't know, I hope to discuss today because the subject is collection, private collection in museum, or museum, or private collection. That's a very important issue. And I hope that Vladimir will be concentrated on this issue because it's, it's, it's in, very important and not so, not so successful in activity as I feel from my side, what I mean. Uh, Two words, some words. Uh, private collection, it depends different private collections, absolutely. Somebody collects everything, somebody collects some of something, 
but I mean real private collection. What I mean real private collection, when it's collected for a long time and collected knows it's important, knows what he is collecting. Not diversified, that he collecting everything like museum. It's museum collecting everything. Collector concentrated in concrete subject. And that is so, so high value of such kind of collection. That's what I want to say. If you need collection, which is concentrated in, in deeply in one subject, which was investigated by collector for many years, it is its ready-made curator project for any exhibition, for any museum. That's what I want to say. Uh, because we are speaking regarding relations between museum and collection. If you have this, because museum have no, no, no possibility to do the same or doing such kind of collectors, because museum is diversified institution. They have just some, uh, some employees, some art historian, but they have to cover huge range of art. They could not be concentrated, they collecting, they putting in the stock, that's what they're doing. They don't have chance to investigate everything what they have, not everything, even part of this. I would say even part of this. And collection, collector is different. Collector, it's, it's research, I mean real collection. It's, it's real ready-made project position. That's what we have from our side. When I presented in Moscow my collection to museums, you know the result? Vladimir knows the result. For last 10 years, last 10 years, we organized 20 exhibitions, 20 huge exhibitions, all in museum, all based on my collection. Eight of them in Pushkin Museum. One of them was in your country last year in Malaga. It was great exhibition. So pity that not so many people visited. It was in Picasso Museum. It was in the place Vladimir was there, in the place where he was born. You could imagine how he was excited. Picasso, not me. I'm telling about Picasso, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I said that Vladimir visited just this exhibition. And it was exhibition regarding relations between Ilyas, Ilyas Danevich, very, very famous person last century, and Picasso regarding their friendship, which nobody put attention on that before. But thanks to private collection, to, okay, I would not say my interest, but my and other people interest in this subject, this subject became popular. Mm -hmm. And after that, we have three international symposium in other countries. After that, we had in Paris two-day exhibition of the same subject. Two weeks ago in San Francisco, in Leisure of Henry Museum. It was, I, I didn't participate. It was organized after don't, that exhibition. Don't give out all, all your cards in a while. Be, be patient, we'll move forward. Oh yeah, forward. yeah, sorry. What, what I want to say, sorry. What I want to say is that uh, collection, such kind of collection and museum, should be tied because such kind of collection is part of museum. And museum should be interested to present its more interest than collector. For me, it's, it's, it's just, just kind of work because I, I don't want to, to sell my collection. I am happy to present it. That is, that's the only my interest. But museum have chance to show it to people. That's what I want. Boris has said that museums usually are diversified um, institutions. They are um, dedicated to different subjects. But um, Gala and Salvador Dali Foundation is the foundation, the organization, the institution that is focused on one um, artist and what was, of course, what was around him, his company, but majorly on one artist. Do you have your ways to work with collectioners during your exhibition process, uh, during your 
uh, museums conducting project process and and do you uh, work with um, private collections in in the way other museums do yes of course we, we do um, as a as a focused uh, institution we embrace anybody who is interested and collects uh, dali uh, other private collectors other museums i think i'd like to take a step back and, and link what you just asked with what uh, Boris was saying, and if possible, dovetail back to what Mercedes was saying. Uh, when we talk about museums today, we cannot forget that I think, if not all, most of the great museums today have the origin in a private collector's collection. The founding body of work that put them into practice was uh, the result of somebody collecting art with a fierce passion that you can read between the lines when Boris speaks about his own art collection, which by the way, is probably the most important private collection of Libros d'Artista in the world. And uh, he's done a wonderful job over the years. It's, it's, it's a widely recognized work of art in itself. And I understand how he wants to share that with the public. Um, but uh, as, as a generic, generic consideration, most of the top art collections in the world have somebody like Boris at the beginning, collecting art with a fierce passion and a different focus, whatever. So that is in the origin. As we evolve over the centuries, they become, these institutions become public institutions and their role becomes wider and they start diversifying and amplifying their activity towards other places, but still with the objective of, of producing a public service, approaching the art and the culture to the people. We do have, Occasion, in occasion, institutions like ours, which was founded by the artist himself. Dali was an artist, but Dali was a collector in his own will. And he kept, he collected his own works. You can also find works of art from other artists here, but in a very small room. And, and he wanted this institution to be a specialized focal institution on his work. We combine our, our, our work with, 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 with the work of, of other institutions who are also the result of private collectors falling in love and collecting Dali with a passion like the Salvador Dali Museum in Florida, which was the result of the collection by Reynolds and Eleanor Morse, who created one of the most exquisite uh, collections of Dali by giving themselves every wedding anniversary a new painting by the artist. And they were the friends and protectors of Dali for many, many years. So we, 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 we have this, this, this mission and we have this core body and probably the largest collection of paintings in, in the world of, uh, of Dali but we embrace other people and other institutions who collect the artists. Why? Because our mission is to educate, divulge, etc. We are, in that sense, we're a non-typical. Mm -hmm. But uh, if, if anything, I would like to stress that we exist because there was a collector, there was a founder who got us going with his collection. And that was in this case, Dali. And that has happened throughout. I mean, Russia is an example of extraordinary collectors. Um, uh, eventually, uh, 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 supporting or, or, or launching voluntarily or involuntarily, some of the most extraordinary museums in the world. But the original drive, the original passion that got those things together was what I, what I call the, 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 the spirit of the collector. Mm -hmm. And the fact that museums today need to build, and this is what Mr. Friedman was saying, need to rebuild bridges with private collectors and actively create a link that brings life to sometimes highly stretched budgets um, in order to, you know, multiply their activities or help them deepen uh, a particular area of expertise, I think is a brilliant idea that should be facilitated. And this is where institutions like, like, uh, like Mercedes's institution, uh, Magasha, who is, we are blessed to have a, a cultural activity around the bank like we do here, because it's a, it's a very illustrative um, institution, is where they can come into play. Not only helping new collectors jump into the into the market and then the world of, 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 of a cultural legacy, but also doing it in the right way, helping them tread a complicated world, increasingly complicated as the years go by, into finding the right pieces, buying them in the right way, or with the right, and partnering with the right people. There is, there is a synergy here that, that I think might, might fall into place after we all finish our conversation today. You're a foundation that is based on the collection of one man or one family. Mm -hmm. we've, added, we've, we've added to it over the years. Well, the foundation yeah. has been an active, probably the most active buyer of Dali works in the world 
for the last 20 years. But the core, the basis is Dali's own collection, yes. Did you, did you ever buy the entire collection from a family or from a, a man? No. We've, been, we've, been, we've, bought, uh, uh, we've bought groups of paintings and we've been given groups of paintings by families and by collectors who felt that, um, that the painting should live here and not somewhere else. So mm -hmm. that is also um, one of the big non- uh, non-economic uh, values that creating an institution like this one uh, uh, gives us. We leverage that sometimes when we negotiate in acquiring paintings to expand the collection. Uh, Boris, speaking of uh, a man who is owning a collection, what's the collectioner's dream? I mean, what do you dream of uh, regarding your um, collection and do you ever think it sometime will happen to be in a kind of museum? Uh, I have an answer to this question. I have some answers to this question because uh, nearest dream, nearest dream. I would say because in front of me, so, so important people from Spain. I, <laughs> it's new, it's new dream. You know which one? It will be kind of surprise. I was suggested it when I was in Malaga. I suggested to local museums, they was excited, but nothing was done. What's common <laughs> in such situation to be excited and do nothing. <laughs> and uh, what would be great, it, it would be one of my dreams, to organize in Spain, in, in Spain, in Moscow, we did it. In Moscow, we did in uh, 2012, we did exhibition, Spanish artists in Libre d'Artistes. No, no, no. Uh, you're, you're talking about the, the possible exhibitions, but my question was about the entire okay. collection. Okay. Yeah. What's my dream? Like the owner of the collection. Yeah, yeah, I will, I will answer. But I want to put, to put this, the first, because it's, uh, because <laughs> on, on your question, I can answer in any place, but here <laughs> I want just to make a kind of suggestion to, to these people. Uh, what do you think about the idea to organize in Spain exhibition of Spanish artists in Libre d'Artistes? I am sure that most of the people in Spain does not know what they did, never saw 80, at least 80% of original prints what they did in Libre d'Artistes. It is the artists like Dali, Picasso, Miro, Tapies, Dominguez, Juan Gris, Clave. Could you imagine such kind of exhibition in one place? And it should be done in Spain, in their country. Okay, that's it. That's, I, I may just... have an idea for you. Say it again? We can dis I, I may have an idea for you. We can discuss later on. <laughs> okay. Okay, we yeah. Talk about it. We should talk about it. Uh, <laughs> with great talk pleasure. It. I'm, it's, sure, I'm sure we will I am total, I have the biggest... A dream come true. <laughs> believe me, my friends, believe me, that, believe me, it's really so. Sorry, I, I say fries what common for current, uh, current US president. Sorry, believe me. He say all the time this word. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, I suppose, I would be more careful, I suppose that my collection is the only one place where you can find all major works in Libre d'Artistes of all these artists in one place. It means that I have in my hand ready-made exhibition, Spanish artist in Libre d'Artistes. Okay, I will stop. Just saying yeah. But besides, what you about have other books and other artists. And yeah, the yeah, it's was... important I, because it's, 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 it's terrible. I feel uncomfortable that I have it and it's possible to do for people and nobody saw it. It's, 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 it's a normal. It's a normal. Just I can see every day open and look through all these books. None in Spain saw it. It's, 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 it's a normal. But do do you have a plan? Do do you have a plan regarding your collection? Okay. Do you have a plan? Uh, yeah, idea in, very in terms of collection. I, okay. And, and Important question. What is regarding my collection? 
Uh, you know, it's interesting what happened with my attitude to my collection now. In years, when I collected this collection. At the beginning, first stage, it was just interest. To find another book, to find another artist, to find another. I was involved like interest. On next stage, I understood that it's something, and I start to investigate what is inside. Now, I feel that I'm in next stage. I feel, maybe it will sound a little bit strange, that I am not like owner. I am like a manager of this collection, you know? I feel that I don't have rights to do with the collection what I want. For example, to sell it tomorrow, to put it to auction. It's for me, it became so important that it's, I, I wouldn't say not belong to me, it belonged to me, but not all rights, I would say, belong to me. Because it's more than just collection and my dream and what I would be happy, it's not saying in front of uh, who is here. I told it to different museums, to different institutions, to organize somewhere in the world, somewhere. In Moscow, great. In US, great. In Europe, somewhere, great. Uh, museum, research center based of this collection. It's not my collection. I would present, I'll give my collection for this. But please because tell me, if, if someone tells you that, okay, Boris, okay. We're, you have the building, we'll call it the Boris Friedman Research Center or whatever, or Liver Datist Research Center, whatever. And, but you have to gift all your collection to this center. Will you do this? It will belong yes. to Pushkin Museum of Art or, yes, or a, MoMA or... No, 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 no. You, 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 you were a commercial guy. Uh, Hi. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because you, you say to, to, to give. I told what I give. I give all possibility to use this collection for this purpose. That's important. How it will be in a juridic, juridical... Uh, we decided it's another question. It could be, yeah, maybe I will give it to museum, to this place. It's not a problem. It's not, it's it's question for the paper. But the main if decision, not, if, if it doesn't this happen. Institution, this institution will have all possibility to use all this collection for and, any purpose of this center. And what if it doesn't happen? For this? What if it doesn't happen? What if nobody wants to... to make up this center sorry i don't why why nobody wants no no what if it doesn't happen what if nobody wants ah, okay to okay okay yeah. i i have answer i will wait <laughs> mercedes <laughs> i have a question for you what if you meet um a decent gentleman or a lady who own who owns a collection and doesn't want doesn't know what to do with it are you gonna help this uh gentleman or a lady out? Uh, yes, of course. Do you know what well, to do? <laughs> yes, of course. My first choice is always try to uh, push uh, these people to towards museums or public uh, compromise. This is the first, this is the first choice. Uh, and uh, sometimes it can be some of, in a collection it's very rare that every single work is of interest for a museum. You ask right now a question. What about what about if nobody, not a museum, was uh, this collection? So it can happen that the, a museum is interested in only in few works. So, um, but the first choice, of course, is always to to go to to be closer to a museum. And I I ask also for the museum uh, the other way around. It's very important. Um, uh, I mean, the the collectors would go towards museums if the museums are of their interest and if the museums show interest on their uh, works. And it's not only about uh, property of, of works, as Boris was saying, it's um, the possibility to work together, to do uh, projects together. And if the relation is tied uh, and, um, and they, they it's based in confidence and based in a, in a straight relation, then 
pro probably the works would be uh, uh, left to the museum. So it's very important that uh, before uh, um, a collector, a museum, um, one give or the other get, um, it has to be a, a very, a very, a, a relationship in in terms of uh, working working together. In, otherwise, it's very it's very difficult to from zero to ask someone to to feel like uh, giving something to a museum. But of course, uh, it has happened and it will happen uh, to 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 let the, the works uh, to museums. But I am interested in something uh, Boris was saying uh, at the beginning when we he was talking about what the museums can do and what the collectors can offer. Collectors know the market, collectors know the, the, the streets, collectors know the, the artist studios, collectors know other collections. So um, collectors have very, very rich information that museums don't have. And it, that's why I, I am always interested in talking about works, but also talking about information, about knowledge, about research, when you were, you were talking about research. And this is the transfer I think is more interesting. The whole thing is not only works, but the whole thing is interesting to be like uh, going up and down between museums and, 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 and collectors. The, the street, the market, the galleries, the, 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 the artist studios go to museums through the art collectors. But for me, that's a, the, the, the most um, contemporary way of being a, a, a thinking uh, patronage nowadays. Did you it might, help, it yes. might help if we, if we add, I would, if, if, if I add, we add a couple of concepts here because very often outside of the world of managing collections and talking to, to collectors and, and people who are deeply involved in, in pursuing a collection, we tend, there tends to be, and, and, and please allow me to use a rather rough, um, um, uh, model. People tend to think of collections as piles of things that have been bought and put in a box or in a room. Yeah. And it's not that. A collection is a is the product of a life worth of love and deep interest. Yes. And that is where Mercedes's Absolutely. comments are important. When when a collector puts that at the disposal of a museum, of a specialized platform, which is a museum, um, it's everything. It's not the actual artistic object or livre d'artista or painting or sculpture. It's everything behind that uh, uh, work of, of life devotion into understanding, pursuing, finding, very often getting to know the artist when the artist is still alive, comes with the package. And I think that has enormous value mm -hmm. when you talk to a collection or a collector. Because the package yeah. is, 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 it multiplies the value of the actual artistic object. Okay? And that mm -hmm. is where the magic happens. And that's where, you know, um, um, that's where museums are interested. That's where museums, yeah. and that's where you can match and, 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 yeah. and, and, and find that, that bridge of collaboration that, that, that we should be talking and, about. And, and for the, in this collaboration, if a museum is interested of an artist installation or a, a, a production of a, a piece, a special piece, not domestic size, but they, they would go to, um, uh, if they have this uh, uh, relation with collections, they would, they would uh, um, have the support of the, uh, to develop this special project. Um, I, I don't know if you've heard about Saha uh, Foundation in Istanbul, in, in, in Istanbul, in Turkey. Saha. Saha is a group of, Saha, it, it means open field. Saha is a group of uh, uh, collectors or patrons that um, uh, are together to promote uh, the, the production, production of work uh, installations, works of art that are not market size you know, in order to have uh, an artist participating in a Biennale or in a uh, museum, you know, works that cannot be uh, commercial. So th th this is a, a, a very important, uh, interesting side of the art collecting, contemporary art collecting now, to, uh, to make works be possible. Um, do you understand me? Yeah. Engaging, engaging. Uh, 
uh, is um, the, the, the collector feels, uh, uh, Boris has a, a very specific, as he said, very specific uh, field to, to, to the research, collect, and but in contemporary, when you are um, attracted by contemporary uh, creation, you, you can, you feel, uh, collectors feel, I'm not, unfortunately, feel that uh, they can make it possible, you know, and uh, it's, a, it's a new way of patronage. Um, Pedro Barbosa, collector in, in uh, Sao Paulo, Brazil, he said he, he began being an a, a, a art of, uh, works of art collector, and he has, uh, div, uh, he has, uh, 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 it has, he has had an evolution, and now he doesn't want to buy any more work of art. He wants to be part of it, you know? Um, uh, bring artists to uh, 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 New York uh, and, and pay them a week in New York to visit museums and other artists. Um, produce uh, books, Livre uh, d'Artiste, or um, uh, pay for an installation in a museum, you know? So I think we have to think in a different way of what it is now art collecting, uh, uh, that get, is research, information, support, be close to. Um, so I, I like when, when it's a debate uh, into, in, in about art collecting, I think we have to open the field. Yeah, Boris Friedman is one of the most open collectors uh, as, uh, among those I know. And I have a question for you, Boris. Would you like to have your own museum? Uh, no, because it's impossible. Why is it impossible? Well, because it's a financial issue. It's, it should be institution. It's, 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 not, it's not worth museum. It's, it's a serious commercial institution. It should have building, should have financing, and so on mm. and so on. Uh, that's why I... <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I would, but it's just just a dream. It's nothing. It's a word. But it really? would be a joint venture with a, an existing an existing museum. No, so the idea you ask. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, what I absolutely what I said uh, regarding this. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I was just asking. It Maybe based, based on existing institution for sure, and it should be. My opinion it must be not private. It must be museum institution because museum has its own culture, own own way of work, and so it's more natural for existing museum to have inside such kind of institution, like such research museum is to attract young people, investigate the graphic art of 20th century, and so on and so on. It's it's. It's my opinion that if, if really think about that, it should be organized in this way. That's why I'm saying word museum research center. Museum research center. Juan Manuel, did you ever be in situation when a collector wants to share some piece of art with your foundation and you don't want to accept it for any reasons? It does happen. I mean, um, no. uh, the, the yeah, foundation but... has its own, uh, uh, the, our museums have their own agenda and their curatorial agenda. And sometimes we are offered um, opportunities that uh, very often we say yes, and we can find ways of embracing that uh, generous uh, offer. In others, we just cannot find that way. Um... Or we just cannot accept it for other reasons, like uh, reasons of authenticity or reasons of, of whatever. That has happened as well. I mean, the world is a complex place. But in general, um, normally what we try is to build a relationship with whomever is a collection and comes to us. Because if it's not, if it doesn't work today, it might work next month or next year. And, and, and that is the whole idea. You want to create, you want to become a forum for people who love, in our case, Dali, okay? And, and uh, trying to be a place where people want to come and, and have a conversation and propose projects is something that we, we embrace. Uh, and very often very interesting things uh, end up happening around, around that, that policy.
but uh, we do have an agenda that we need to stick to because there's budgets behind it, there's resource allocation. So you cannot just jump on every single opportunity as it turns up. We need to manage that process. But yes, I would say that having an open mind and being clear about what your mission is uh, makes us want to be able to, you know, um, establish that relationship with anybody that is in a position to propose. In our case, DALI related projects. Yeah. Marcellus, have you ever been to a situation when a collector would like to share its collection, his collection or um, separate works of art? And you know that it's quite impossible for museums to accept it. Yes. Yes. Can, uh, for can you set an example? Um, yeah. Um, um, uh, the, I wouldn't say collector, but the owner of some works of art that wanted to to give uh, them to museum. Uh, and this artist was already very well represented in the museum. So there was no place for, for, for this work. So you consider, then you have to consider another museum because uh, otherwise the, the work would be at the reserves and never see the, never see the light after the, uh, out of, of the, you know the the storage, so yes, it depends on uh, because they the, the 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 it happens mostly with in the case of someone who has uh, received a work or heritage. You know, um, when somebody is buying act actively, they know the museums and they know how to when when you give information, they 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 can understand what you say or or, or they already know. It happens more when it's, it, it comes to a, a work that was at the family, you know, and, and they want to just get, not get rid of, but give it or, or sell it or, you know, then it's, a, it's a more, our help is more valuable in that, in, in terms of choice, making the right choice. Because we do this research on the collections and then on the, on the relation that this work can have uh, with them. Um, with a collection of the museum, yeah. Boris, did you ever have to convince a museum that what you collect in Libertatist is an important issue? Because museums are usually big, if they're big, usually busy, usually thinking about, you know, 10 exhibitions at a time, and they usually don't have time to, you know, to think about some new genres, another collector, and so on. Do you have your ways to convince a museum that this is really important? Mm, I, I, I don't know the ways. It's, it's important. It's subject is the way. It's how, how can I uh, not convince anybody if you approach somebody and tell them, look, let us organize exhibition or let us show you graphic works. Picasso, Dali, Miro, De Buffet, Matisse, where, which you never saw. Mm. Yeah, yeah, I am not joking. Never saw. That's, that's interest of this. It's not like I'm a little bit crazy with the collection, believe me. I, I, I understand what I, I am saying. And I mm. work with many serious art historians. For example, last month I did, okay, Pushkin Museum, it's like my museum. <laughs> Eight exhibition was done there, I love them, and they did great job. It's the only one museum in the world which did eight exhibition livery artists for last eight years, eight from now as well. And, but I, for example, last uh, December, yeah, yeah, this is what happened, time flies, I did presentation in Boston Fine Art Museum regarding subject of livery artist and regarding what, in what way it could go and so on. It was presented to director mm -hmm. museum and three major curators. That was four people to whom I talked about that. It, it was interesting. They were surprised. They saw it and they heard some things first time. First time, they didn't know that so many art graphic works was done by number one artist of 20th century. It's, it's, it's impossible to believe, but it's like that. 
So that's why I say that this subject is not like liberal adaptives, it's graphic works, prints, major artists of 20th century, which was missed, mm. missed by all art historians of 20th century. I can say it mm. in any place to any people and would be happy to hear that I'm wrong. Till now, nobody, mm. nobody told me any word that I'm wrong. Juan Manuel, when you accept works for the foundation's collection, do you have some special terms, some very, um, some difficult terms with the collectors who want the you know the special terms on which they give out their work or or give it out forever? It's, it's, it's actually quite straightforward. I mean, uh, what we cannot do is accept something that is going to condition the freedom of, 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 of managing our institution. Uh, other than that, we, we have, we're very flexible in accommodating um, uh, the emotional link of, of a collector or the family of a collector with the work of art. What, what can um, be these conditions? The conditions means that uh, we, for example, will not accept the work if we are obliged to have it in the same place, in the same room forever, no, uh -huh. always. Huh? If we're not allowed to put it in one of our exhibitions that might go to Moscow or might go to Tokyo. Okay? Uh, there are a number of things that would condition our ability to act as, a, as, a, as, a, as an independent, truly independent, because we are a private institution. And uh, the, thus we, we, we are very, we, and we work very hard to stay independent so we can take the optimal decisions in managing Dali's legacy. Uh, we would not, we will not be coherent with that. I must say that most of the times we've had pretty straightforward um, 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 agreements with either collectors or collectors inheritors about that. And very often, uh, unfortunately, it's not very often that we get given uh, um, the kind of works that we need for the collection. We usually have to buy them. What we get is very good, very good deals from people that feel that they would rather sell it to us than take it out to market and auction it because of the emotional value of mm -hmm. sending the work between brackets back home. How, how okay, and then if there's an arm's length deal, um, the rules are much more clear in that sense because there's a transfer of ownership in, in a very well-regulated way. <laughs> How strict was Dali himself about his collection? Does he, did he have any special conditions on which he founded this institution and passed it further? Well, yes. Uh, the truth is that what we don't accept from further collectors, we have from the founder. There's three or four paintings that are, uh, are non-movable uh, from the place they are. And if you've been to the museum, you will have seen them. It's a basket of bread and there's a couple more. But the basket of bread is the quintessential um, um, rigid condition of the, of the founding father of the museum in terms of it has to stay there forever because it's one of the pillars of this room and of this collection. So we cannot lend it as a matter of it by, by, by statute. Otherwise, Dali was, remember, Dali was 50, 60 years ahead of his time. He was one of the most advanced minds in his days and he was the most flexible, tolerant, adaptable person he was, on the other hand, a classic, a lover of classical river. So the challenge of managing his legacy is embracing his, his audacity and his modernity and also understanding that he was very strict about certain rules of authenticity, of in spite of many of the background noise, of rigor, of respect for sources. Uh, you see this in his, his Libros d'Artista, for example, that he did a, a lot of them and I think uh, Modis is probably one of the only people in the world that has, I think, almost all of Dali's um, Libro d'Artista. Oh, major. The work and the passion and the obsession with <coughs> rigor and tradition in producing those is considerable in terms of the, 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 the format, the, 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 the power of his, of, of his images and the power of, of, his, of his illustrations is enormous, is very, very, very groundbreaking. But he was very strict with numbers. He was very strict with quality. He was very strict with procedure. Why? Because it's that dichotomy that made him such a uh, great artist. And in terms of a museum, I think it's the same thing. In many things, he's a groundbreaker. 
But when it comes to the way the words have to be taken care of, the ways they have to be managed, they have, the ways they have to be curated, um, you have a, 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 a very well-informed and a very, very, um, um, uh, I would say, uh, rigorous uh, art lover. Mercedes, did you ever come across some special conditions from the collectors who are ready to give out their collection or piece of art, but on some really, really special conditions? What could they be? Um, I think uh, in, in Spain, there are two answers again. Uh, in Spain, public museums can't accept conditions. If you give a donation, uh, it can't be conditioned, uh, otherwise it's not accepted. For instance, a collector from, from Spain, had, by the way, he had a, one of his collections was in, in Russian art. He had a collection of uh, uh, documents and photographies, documents on uh, first uh, civil war and the first, the first uh, world war. And he offered the collection to the Reina Museum in, uh, in Madrid. But, uh, and he said, uh, uh, I want to give this collection to the Reina Sofia. And the ministry said, mm, okay. And then as it went down, a lawyer said, no, you can't say where this collection has to go. This collection has to go to the archive in Salamanca. And the collector said, no, I want this. It's a frame of the collection, you know? And, uh, and they said, he, finally, the collection ended up at the Harvard Library in the States. So, you know, because uh, he couldn't, not, it wasn't a condition, it was a choice. It was his choice because of the, the sense of his collection together with the collection of the Reina Sofia. So a public museum can't accept a condition. And um, in private, uh, of course, it depends on the quality of the work and depends on the interest of the, of the museum to, to receive this donation. But we had, when I was um, director of uh, uh, Arts and Patronage Foundation, I, I like to just give a, a, a little information about uh, Livre d'Artiste uh, in a minute. Um, we invited uh, uh, collectors, patrons, uh, museum directors to give uh, um, a, a lecture, but the uh, lecture was a, the, the, just a, a meeting with, with uh, collectors in Spain and museum directors in Spain to know how to manage and how to attract and how to build collections you know, from different sides. This relation between art, uh, collect, art collecting and museums, we were uh, trying to uh, bring um, witness and, and uh, actors from in, in abroad to Spain in order to promote how to do it in a correct way. And I remember a very interesting uh, lecture that I can send to you by um, Philippe de Montebello former director of Metropolitan Museum in New York uh, for I think uh, more than 40 years. And he, his lecture was about this relation between the museum, the Metropolitan and, and, and the collectors and how they managed to attract them and how they managed to, uh, to get rid of this condition. And it's a, a, a very interesting catalog of different conditions that collectors were imposing to the museum. So it's a, if you are private, you can have more, you can be more or less flexible and mm -hmm. you can mm, accept or not. In public, in Spain, you can't. Well, okay, and just, uh, uh, I wanted to, to talk about uh, Libre d'Artiste when we start this project, promoted also by La Caixa, the Art and Patronage Foundation, we were supporting um, the artist creation by giving grants uh, to, to do, to make, to develop uh, Livre d'Artiste. So we were funding um, these books by the artists uh, for, for um, quite a long, uh, se for seven years. So we, we have seven uh, different uh, Livre d'Artiste, contemporary, one, contemporary art ones. And we also awarded a collector that I don't know if you have ever met called Jose Maria La Fuente, Archivo La Fuente. Does it make any sense for you? Okay. Uh, he has a very extraordinary collection. Uh, well, quantity is 1,300 uh, works, but it's uh, books, 
uh, um, prints, uh, any information, even um, conceptual that can has um, uh, make art history uh, uh, has, sorry, I have to find the words. Uh, in a museum, you see the work of art, which is the end of the artist process, okay? And this collector, collection uh, uh, works is what makes this work be this work the way it is. Mm -hmm. So for instance, artist uh, correspondence, uh, um, uh, prints uh, uh, for new projects, uh, um, letters, um, books, anything, that has to do with the evolution of art in the in the 20th century, and uh, and for us, we at the beginning of this project, we project we saw the importance of the the, uh, the uh, of this collection, such as yours, Boris, uh, in art history because it brings light to art history. This is what I want to stress: the importance of your. Uh, uh, position your uh, uh, the way you see uh, art collecting is very very important for art history and I yep. just wanted to because I've been always in my philanthropy advice uh, uh, head but I, I wanted to talk about this uh, moment while when we were thinking on how to promote art collecting as a way of patronage which is very very important and in our, our country we used to be the best collectors at the 17th century. In the meantime, not so much. <laughs> yeah. let, us, let us take the first step. Let us organize in Spain, in your yes. brilliant city. I love it. I love Barcelona and dream to come back to Barcelona. Let us organize. Exhibition. Yes, let's share. Let's share. And let, first, in, let's share yeah. ideas. It would be great, great surprise for Spanish people. And I think that this is the perfect ending. Uh, we had just one hour. Mm -hmm. I think we could spend more and more hours discussing this enormously big issue, but uh, we had just this tough time. And I was, I, I'm, I'm waiting for the link from you, Mercedes. I will uh, exchange addresses uh, uh, with the organizers. Mm -hmm. I, I would love yes. to listen to this lecture by. The, the Metropolitan Art yes. Museum director. And thank you Philippe very much. I, I know how busy you could be during daytime. And thank you very much for sharing your time with us. I wish the uh, customers and the clients and the guests coming back to museums, to galleries and, and life in, in Spain, both in Russia and America, coming, coming back again. And I wish Boris his dreams come true. Thank you. Thank you very much and hope to see you Thank in you. Spain or in Russia or wherever in the world. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye.